Hello, everybody. Welcome to the new episode of the Pep Talk. My name is Nadi, and I'll be your host today. Uh, we'll be discussing a very interesting topic today, and that is the editor's perspective and the fundamentals of nonfiction. So to understand the differences in perspective of an editor's point of view and a writer's point of view, we have Soumya Mukherjee with us today. Thank you so much, Soumya, for joining us today. It's a pleasure and an honor. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and everybody, I think you'll be glad to know that Soumya has had an extensive career in editing and especially in publishing as a writer herself. Uh, she has had great uh, roles like deputy editor at Platform Magazine, managing editor of Store, as well as she has associations with The Guardian, Hindustan Times, The Times of India Group, and so much more. Wow, Soumya, you have quite an extensive resume here. Uh, it's always a work in progress. I think that's only a resume. But um, as time changes and, you know, we all evolve, especially in an editor's role, you need to evolve every day. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, we're so glad to have you here and to talk to you about your experiences, which will help, uh, obviously, us have this conversation and the listeners as well who are trying to look at ways and how to, you know, think about nonfiction, which is literally neck to neck in genre in 21st century as fantasy fiction, which has always been popular. So I'm very excited to have this conversation today. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nidhi. Um, as I said, it's a privilege to be here and to be able to share some of the learnings and, um, you know, some of the experiences that I have and to be able to hopefully um, be useful to a lot of writers out there. That would be great. Okay, so since all this like conversation, we've already established that you have a thorough knowledge of the publishing industry and especially about what sort of project and, you know, manuscript gets through the door on the first try. So what would you like to share about that? Thank you so much for the question. I think that's one of the most pertinent questions. Uh, to begin your writing journey with. Um, I think I would articulate that in a slightly different way. Although editors are usually seen as gatekeepers or guardians, it's not so much about uh, getting writing through the door. It's about what kind of writing gets through the mind, mm -hmm. uh, the heart and the soul. You know, what, what really hits the nail is what we should all be looking at. So there are a couple of points to remember. One is um, that writers should compose the entire idea. You know, don't make the gist so short or so general that you expect the editor to peep into your head. They cannot, even if they want it, or even if they can. No one can ever begin a good story with an assumption. So put down your idea clearly, comprehensively, and specifically. And if that's not happening yet, take a step back and let the water sit still. It will come to you in the perfect manner and at the perfect time. And that is when it's ripe for the send off. So that's one point. Um, then I would say follow the ascribed format and help your editor see the main focus or the plot or the real story in there. Now, the summary must have a focal point from where the other aspects and components are flowing. So it's important to give both a bird's eye view, that is the larger picture, as well as the finer details so that you equip the editor with all the information that is needed to collaborate effectively. Um, another important point is that you must be flexible. So these are fidgetal times. Uh, you know, there's a combination of physical, there's a combination of digital, and transmedia is opening up new avenues to tell stories in various immersive ways, especially while working with real nonfiction material. So there's photographs, there are visuals, there'll be videos, sketches, augmented forms, virtual reality, AI. Now you can even collaborate, there are tools where you can even collaborate with AI um, to add different forms to your writing. So there are podcasts as we are in one, there are avatar formats. So when you pitch a piece, remember that the editor is mostly thinking of the various ways in which the story could be told. Be open to suggestions feedback and reworking or reorienting the idea as it is mostly the writer's, um, you know, it's in the writer's own interest as much as it is in the publications. And finally, um, what's the edge? 
So what is the edge? What is you about your writing? You know, what is the differentiator? What is the unique value in your pitch? Don't think of it um, as something you need to introduce deliberately. You don't have to work on it. It's the very essence of what you have in mind. And you only have to let it show up on the top. Um, be honest, be really straightforward with what you have in mind. And when you're honest to your writing, the essence will come atop, the essence uh, will show through. So an editor will not assess your piece with the ornamental language of the pitch. So the more succinct, the better. That was put together very comprehensively. Thank you so much. And this literally gives us an idea of how many projects you yourself have worked on. You know, a manuscript that you've looked at, that you've come up with this certain level of differentiation for so many things. And it just makes me question, like, how your experience has been as an editor for all these projects. And since you yourself write quite a bit, so how has that changed your writing? Yeah, that's actually a very interesting question, um, Nidhi. I'm so happy that you put it forth. It's a very important question as well. Um, it's a privilege and an honor to be entrusted with someone else's words. And I'm grateful for this experience. Writing is a very personal discipline and a piece of writing in its truest form is absolutely sacred to me. Uh, therefore, it is also challenging to make that essential connect with both the piece and its creator. And it's an ever-evolving experience. So an editor's always a work in progress. Um, and is deeply enriched by and grows with each script that they worked with. An editor is essentially a harmonizer, making sure that everything in a piece of writing falls and flows in rhythm. An editor is also a writer that has developed an appetite far more voracious than just for their own writing. Um, an editor informs uh, by way of their occupation the writer within them, it hones the writer, but it can also be detrimental to the writer in them as they're always self-editing. Thank you, Soumya. That was pretty interesting. And it just um, makes me wonder when you look at a project, especially now that we're talking about nonfiction, which um, what do you think makes it more interesting and powerful? Because there is no escape escapism basically in nonfiction, which is the core of fantasy that's why it's so popular so what do you suggest and what have you you know come across in these projects yourself um what sets nonfiction apart is the truth so while fiction is based on imagination as a premise and fiction is about fantasy you know what makes nonfiction really powerful really interesting is the ugly, bare, naked, or even loving truth. If it's about humanity, if it's about human stories, there's the yin and the yang, there's the dark and the light. There are always multiple sides to reality, not one or two. But it's just as it is. And therefore, uh, you're not putting filters, you're not coloring it with um, you know, you're not coloring it with sides, you're not coloring it uh, with imagination, you're not coloring it with uh, invention. And that is what makes nonfiction stand apart. So as honestly told as possible, whether in illustration or in words, and all sides of the story, you know, not well balanced necessarily, so don't underestimate your reader at their power of perception, but give them different perspectives, if not one powerful perspective presented with strong arguments and facts. And that's something that makes nonfiction an absolute beauty. That is true. Uh, but then again, it begs the question of how truthful it is, you know? So the process of editing it must be uh, paramount in a way that it's so burdensome you know, that you have to make sure that the truth that the writer is trying to speak out you know is intact but so how is your editing process in this because this always makes me curious when I talk to editors and you know 
So how that works out for you? Thank you so much, Nidhi, for asking about the editing process. Um, it is the first time that I'm speaking about the process and it's equally challenging to articulate it, but I'll give it a shot. Um, you have to live the truth along with um, the piece of text in your hands. You have to live that truth along with its creator. You have to be one with them. Um, and it may sound burdensome and you know, it may sound really intensive as a process. And you know, put your blinkers on and you know, work with you know, thousands and thousands of words. Um, and, you know, I'll put your specs on and just get in there. But actually, it occurs very organically. So it also becomes a joy sometimes to, to be one with that writing and to help shape it up, uh, to be one with the writer. And, you know, it becomes a beautiful process. I've recently heard from many of the writers that I've collaborated with. And, you know, it was heartening to hear that was equally a joy for them. And for an editor, I think that means the most that the writer feels that they were understood. You know, the writing feels that it was understood. And um, so, as I said, it occurs organically. So I read a piece of nonfiction. It could be an essay. It could be a memoir. It could be a report. It could be a review, um, opinion, critique, travelogue, various forms, an autobiography, uh, some books or, uh, you know, some, some parts of text are a series of interviews. There's academic research. Um, it's a tell-all, an expose. So I've worked with different kinds of texts. So at first I go unarmed. I immerse myself in it as a reader and then I come out from the swim and then I put together my thoughts and what can make that dive better. So the first time you're with a text, um, you go into it just as you are. You do not go in with any judgment. In fact, uh, judgment is... Um, Judgment is a word that should not exist in editing at all. Um, and then I list those aspects out. I try and think from every side of the story, from all the questions that it could give birth to, um, not just the essential five W's and one H, which is why, what, how, when, where. Um, so what can make it more insightful, not just informative, it needs to be personal. It needs to be hard hitting. Does it need to be soul warming or full of reflection? What would make it more thought provoking? So I share that with the writer's feedback. And then I leave it open to discussion and conversation. So let it simmer. You know, let it sit there for a while. And uh, it's in a few rounds of that feedback that the piece takes shape. And some aspects, mostly the writers are very receptive, very affirmatively. So um, they're quick on the uptake. They, um, you know, they see how what the editor says is, is going to, let's say, add value to the text, is going to uh, make their piece come alive better. You know, it's, it's almost like, um, and, and then it takes shape and finally it, there comes the turn of the punch, you know, is the focus coming through? So while you're looking at all the aspects, you have to keep the focus in perspective. That's something that's primary. The challenge of editing is that you have to become the writer. You have to think from their place, but even more powerfully, you have to, you have to become a better writer. You need to understand that every bit of what the writer is feeling and sharing can be, um, you know, can be can be elevated just a little bit by your own thought. You need to give it more thought. You shine up the rough edges of the rock. You put a crown of a title. You bring out the essence and blurbs and introductions. But all of that happens later. First, you need to sit with it, sit with their thoughts and compose them. You ensure they flow in the right direction, you organize the components and organically allow the structure to make the writer go back and see their idea with more clarity, more possibility, more power. That is the real job of the editor. It's like, it's like putting the body uh, through the workout till it's fit. You know, only in this case, it's not a body, it's a body copy. So perfection is plastic, uh, therefore to keep it real, 
and fit is the real challenge. So uh, if I were to sum up the stages, it would be the concept, it would be development and the grooming of, of the piece or the child, you know, and, and the subject is the calling. And then the structure takes shape. Wow, that you explained it quite beautifully. Thank you so much. This also makes me wonder what would be your, you know, perfect book in terms of the editing process, like yourself, or there's a book that you read that you love? Um, I'll be honest, there are many and many, and um, I could ramble out names, but that would be unfair uh, to single out any names. And um, if only I could work with, uh, you know, some remarkable writers from the past and the future would be great. So we, we work with writers today, but I always feel like there were some writers from the past that I would have loved to speak with or work with. Um, I think I'll, I'll refrain from names. There are very many favorites. So I think. <laughs> okay. So, okay, let me, you know, rephrase this in a way. It's like, what, you know, which book from the past, let's say, you would have loved to work on or which is the writer that you would have loved to work with? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. One is, of course, um, Joan Didin is someone uh, that I would have uh, definitely wanted to work with. Um, I would have loved to work with, um, you know, you will know Harari. And uh, there's so many more journalists, really, and not just journalists, writers. I don't know, Virginia Woolf, perhaps, but wow. you see, most of them are from the past, you know. Yeah. So, um, as I said, it's, it's a very, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, a very inexhaustive list, really. Um, so, it's, it's very difficult for me to be taking names, and I'm sure I'm missing out on some great names right now. Um, but yes, I guess a lot of, um, let me tell you, a lot of graphic illustrators as well, Closer Home, it's not exactly fiction or nonfiction, it lies somewhere in the middle. There's also illustrative um, literature and slightly mythical, but leaning more towards nonfiction, the Amrita Patil. Um, again, let me just think about it a little more. I think I may just bore <laughs> our listeners if I think too hard. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I guess that's, that's like, like a smaller list right now. Tom Wolf would be one, definitely, again. Mm. Then I would also probably put a lot of, uh, though poetry is a completely different genre, I think poetry largely would fall under the purview of nonfiction if you look at the bigger umbrella than fiction because it comes from a place of very personal and very real experiences. So wow. um, that is the yeah. first time I've heard somebody categorize poetry as nonfiction, and your reasons are quite interesting <laughs> absolutely you know no poetry can of course poetry is um, an inexplicable um, alchemy of imagination meeting reality and therefore sometimes it takes really fantastical forms but if you see poetry can only come from a place of reality poetry cannot yes all be manufactured or all be conjured without any uh, truth to its foundation. And therefore, um, I would say Sylvia Plath uh, would be one, definitely, or Susan yeah. Sontag would be another one. Um, and also because of, uh, you know, it's, it's strange, but my journey, um, my journey uh, professionally and personally in, in both realms of writing and editing, it, although I've not really edited poetry so far, but um, as a creative journalist, as well as a literary journalist, on one hand, I've dealt with a lot of nonfiction. However, I'm deeply interested in poetry as well. And I feel like there's a clear connection. The best poetry always came in times of social political turmoil from Walt Whitman, uh, you know, Leaves of Grass in a time when America was going through a revolution, the transcendentalists uh, who always tried to set reality in a better perspective. Uh, to rise above things that were, you know, plaguing those times um, is, is another beautiful way of even writing nonfiction, if you can. You know, I mean, if you, if you read some of the um, poets, and, uh, 
you know, of, of those times, the poets and seekers and tellers, they had the most beautiful way of tra- telling the truth. So yes, those are just some names. Um, top that of is, the hat. Wow, yeah. that is not- a powerful <laughs> list that you mentioned. That is <laughs> I would have loved uh, to see the collaboration of you and those writers. It would have been interesting. <laughs> that's, that's uh, I mean, a, a completely like, uh, not only are we different generations, but uh, this is almost, um, you know, this is the ideal wish list <laughs> and obviously something that <laughs> remains in the imagination. But that's why I said, you know, it would be remarkable to work from writers in the past, in the, in the future. That's, that's what would be really great. But Amanda Gorman, of course, and imports today the way she speaks and the way she writes about uh, how things are. But um, you can put beauty in the truth as well. Yeah. So the fact about nonfiction is that a lot of people think, oh, my God, it's nonfiction. It will be uh, really disturbing and it will be about war. And, and by the way, war nonfiction is not easy to write. And I've grown up very closely with, uh, you know, family in the military services. And therefore, um, there are a lot of challenges to that as well, and you know, different genres. So yes, um, as as much of a you know, I mean, long shot it was seen. That's why I was refraining from the names because they were just <laughs> so yeah. Oh, that's perfectly wonderful. I would say the list was amazing, and uh, I think the most I would like to I would like you to share some of the you know greatest tips or experiences for new or the first time writers that there are, because I think for them, understanding the importance of an editor is very important in a way because uh, people, editors are an inexplicable and quite, there's a codependency of publishing and, you know, the editing department in this whole industry. But, um, some people tend to think of it as disposable. Like, I'm not sure if it's the right word, but optional, probably. But it's the most mm-hmm. important thing that changes the book in itself, like makes a manuscript a book, I would like to say. Sure. sure. I think, um, Nidhi, that's very powerfully put. As I said, that uh, the editor's job is, is to shine that piece of rock and to carve it into a diamond, you know, uh, to chisel it. And it's, it's not easy, um, as I say, it's not easy for an editor to, to be able to imbibe and to be able to internalize your story and to be able to tell it from your voice and become one with it and still elevate it in ways that they think uh, would make it, as I said, more more powerful, more magical, see more possibility, more potential, and talk to a variety of readers. So mostly an editor, by way of their experience, have had the chance to um, engage with a wide diversity of readers. And today, the readers, country agnostic, the readers, culture agnostic, the reader is universal and the reader wants a global perspective, wants a story that is deeply personal and yet deeply relatable. Because at the end of the day, nonfiction is the human story. And as humans, we are all made of the same fabric. Um, it's important to realize that the editor may come with a certain wherewithal or may come uh, with a certain set of thoughts and a certain skill to tailor your piece to make it suitable and to make it connectable, if I can use that word, you know, with humans across the globe. And that's where you need to trust the editor. Sometimes we think of editors as as, uh, you basically meant disposable, but um, I mean, you didn't mean disposable, but you said you use the word disposable, which which really means that is is this something that can be done away with? Choose your editor carefully. See who speaks with your sensibilities. See if um, you know their work in the past or their person is someone that your words can be one with. 
Um, but yes, that's a very, editing is a very important and absolutely inextricable and therefore indisposable part of the writing process. It's not just about uh, fixing your P's and Q's. Um, big um, preconceived notion about, about editing is that it's proofreading and it's not. You know, of course, there are proofreaders who, who are very important. Proofreading is a very important process, but proofreading is the first or let's say is, is uh, housekeeping, right? It's, it's hygiene, it's basic hygiene. But, but in order to cultivate a lifestyle or uh, to cultivate a culture, hygiene or housekeeping is just basic. That's only the starting point. And where is the architect or where is the interior design when you're setting up a house or, you know, who are the people you put into it? What is, what is the value system that you build there? Um, what is the work? Um, you know, what shapes that home is much more than just the housekeeping. And you have to look at the editing process as that. It's the process of include exclusion of what's unnecessary or let's not call it unnecessary, but the exclusion of the words that need to be left out in order to make the words that are included that actually drive home your point, that drive home your story. And that is inextricable. That is indisposable. It's like there's wheat and there's chaff. And when there's everything together, you need to chaff it out. And only then you can, you know, sieve out what, what really needs to flow, the essence or keep the soul. It's about removing the extraneous. It's about keeping the essence. It's about one word here or, you know, one title or one way of not just structuring it, but embodying your story the best that it can be uh, embodied as, not just the presentation. Definitely there are stages and there will be covers and there will be the titling and then there will be the foreword and the, you know, I mean, uh, the preface and of course the afterword and those things and the blurb. The blurb is the most powerful part of your piece of writing, especially if it's long form, you know, in uh, long form literary narrative forms. Uh, what is at the back of the book or what is in the beginning of the introduction or the story can make or break its power to reach people. And therefore, these are things that you can't possibly think of overlooking, you know. Uh, good writing is great, but good editing makes that writing come through. So as a writer, you know, um, of course, so I, I really think that editing should be viewed through this lens rather than um, the lens of someone who sees editors as gatekeepers. As I said, ed editor's job is not uh, so much the gatekeepers as it is to be a harmonizer. That is the important job. And um, while you look at this through the right lens, you know, it's, it's not someone who's unnecessarily chopping, striking out, or let's do away with this, we need to shorten this, word sealing. All of that comes in. But as long as you can keep the essence and, you know, it's, it's the editor is not a police person, is not a cop. That's something that needs to be, um, uh, to be kept in mind and also for all editors as well to understand their own roles better. And for writers, the only advice I have is write that story. You know, have the courage to put it out. It may be turned down many a time. Uh, but when the idea and the words have arrived and are ripe, you will always find a pair of scissor hands and the support that you need in an editor for it to go out to the world in the best possible shape. Wow. Thank you so much, Samya. That was the most appropriately put together example and explanation that I've heard. Thank you. Thank you. My joy as well. I hope that... Um, in some ways, this can be of use to us all. Yes, extremely. Uh, like, I was so glad that you decided to talk to us uh, about all of this, your experiences and your wisdom, basically, and to explain to us the you know, specific editor's point of view, especially in a nonfiction genre which we haven't had the chance to you know, um, extensively talk about on this podcast before. So we're really grateful for that. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine. And uh, 
you know, as I said, um, everyone's a work in progress and, and so are editors. So we must remember that. Thank you so much, Nadi. Thank, thank you, you for Sonia. patiently listening. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, thank you to everybody who's been listening for all this while. And I hope you got all the information you were looking for and found the importance of editor, which has always have been the most important thing in the publishing industry and found the reasoning for it. And I hope you guys definitely write the manuscript and, you know, finish that book, as Samia said. So and uh, you will find a supporter in the position of an editor. And I hope you go out and share it with the world. Thank you. Yes. All the best, everyone. Thank you.